Hello everybody. Um, so I just like to give an update on my carnivorous plants and uh, and another time lapse uh, video coming up. And uh, so first off, let's look at my carnivorous plants here. Um, here is my sundew, which somebody pointed out that it's a primary hybrid. Um, I forgot the name, but it's a primary hybrid that is endemic to Japan. So thank you for uh, um, pointing out that uh, this is a primary hybrid of two species. I will um, I would have to put it on the information card to let you know um, what's the uh, name of it. I forgot. I'm terrible at the uh, scientific names. So there you go. So you could see it has a lot of juice, dew spottings on it, and it's still quite red. And I like the moss background, which are the um, the the very um, minute, very micros not microscopic. It's still like very big though. But um, I like the background contrast with the moss, so I'm really liking that. And um, yeah it really like the high humidity definitely in the humidity tent so it really likes one ninety percent relatively relative humidity um so you should try that for people who are who, um struggling to grow their carnivorous plants and also i have my nepenthes ventricosa here picture plant so i it's 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 it really took off since it was a baby when I took it, and it has like larger pictures now, and it's still like giving out new leaves. And then one is like dark um, darkening here the leaf and also the, its corresponding picture. So what's up with that? So um, what do you think, guys? Should I cut it off? I think I should cut it off because I think it will die eventually. And it's not really giving me a, a good look on my plant but um, yeah let me know in the comment section if I really have to cut it or should I just let it be I'm not really sure but I don't think it will hurt it if I cut it right perhaps yeah and here is the vinicolor that's just about to bloom okay so it's really close I could definitely notice that the um, the the bud on this one as you could see is becoming fatter and there's there's like substance around it now that's almost about you know that's almost about to open so yeah I'm really terribly excited with this one and I'm very hopeful with the new growths on the on this one too see there's like a baby here a baby Papid Pedalum Vinicolor the Modi type all right so that's pretty much it and I just like to share my how I grow my well these three plants so basically they're all in the humidity tent I they're always wet pretty much but not soggy as you can see this is very moist and it this pot by the way doesn't have holes in it so I really have to be careful not to flood it but it really likes it always almost wet so I just wet this and then it's good for like two weeks or so so I don't really have to think about it and it's in the humidity tent it's loving the, the humidity and yeah I don't really have to take care of it that much because it's so low low maintenance um, just like this two, um, these two are also in the humidity tent and they're um, on what they call the swamp method that I told you about with the orchids. I also do it for the carnivorous plants so I just have a pool of water at the bottom and it doesn't really, sometimes they, the, the, that water dries up and then I just put some back, uh, put back water in it and that's, that's pretty much it. It grows really well that way and yeah I'm gonna keep doing that because it works and of course you know my 
sweet oh, eye candy, sweet memory. Oh, sorry, sweet sensation. So it's still um, rocking hard there. Really nice. And uh, there you go. I, there's another in. It's again in sheet, and it it's there. There are buds inside. Definitely, I could see that. But so I'm very happy with that purchase and there are new growths with small sheets on them so it's gonna give me almost like a flower every month or so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely sure that it would do and that's about to open also the palinopsis that I don't cut so that's pretty much my update for you guys and um, for the Phelanopsis, uh, people who commented on Facebook that, you know, it's really um, uh, depending on you guys if you like to cut your old flower spikes on your fowls. But on my case, I just don't want to cut it because it, they're quite healthy. If they're not that quite healthy, maybe it's quite a good idea to cut it off so the plant would have a chance to recover and, you know, be more healthier and then give you more blooms in the future. So that's quite a good idea too. But in my case, since my fowls are looking great, uh, very uh, good root structure or root system, just as long as you have a good root system and of course, you know, healthy leaves, you're good to go. So you don't really have to cut it. But, you know, it really depends on how you grow your plants. And I, I have nothing against that. Actually, I'm pro um, for anything that would make you happy as an orchid grower, right? So yeah, so we're all here for the fun. We're, we're not really like know it all. So we're like, oh, you should do this and you should do that. No, there's no other way doing it. No, that's not right. I mean, you know, you're doing this as a hobby. You know, it's not something that you're doing for like competition or whatever. I mean, you might be doing it for competition in your orchid society, but I don't really, I'm not really into that scene. So I'm just a happy-go-lucky grower you could say and um, yeah that's pretty much what yet what I, would, I would have for this episode and happy growing my orchid loving friends and bye bye